Hi, Steve. Hello, nice to meet you. How are you? Good, thanks. That's a great movie. It's a bona fide classic. Yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> Edge of the seat stuff. Yeah. This bat vigilante is like a one man reign of terror. You don't get to decide what the right thing is. Nobody cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman. Your character in Batman vs Superman and Man of Steel is a very paternal character. Yeah, he's pretty much the, the new father figure for Clark. Yeah, and for Lois. Yeah. We saw you lifting rubble off people in the previous film. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of Ben's job more in this, this, this time Yeah, that was, that was my Superman moment. What was great about Man of Steel, everybody had a Superman moment. Um, this movie, it shifts and, you know, we, we sort of see and experience Superman from the ground through Ben and, you know, Bruce Wayne. We experience sort of the shadow side of Superman. Yeah. As uh, the editor of the Daily Planet, the editor's job is usually quite a hard-ass kind of role. Um, in your case, it's sort of playing both sides of that coin. Um, what sort of stories would you be sending your staff out to tackle as an editor, do you think? If I knew anything about journalism, I could really answer <laughs> that question, but I don't know. I really don't. It's, uh, you know, someone else asked me if I ever thought about that kind of a career. Would I ever want to be involved in journalism? And it never, it has never occurred to me that that would be something that I would be good at. I don't know that I could be as objective as journalists really need to be to be effective. You're running quite a crusading reporter in the in the form of Lois, so I think you've kind of yeah, I've got, got that subjectivity yeah, covered. I've got that covered. I mean, she's his, you know, his star, and his favorite child. If if you know, Clark and Lois are his children, she's his fave, and uh, she can pretty much get away with what she wants to as long as she catches him, you know, on the right day at the right moment. Whereas Clark has to be a little more sneaky. You're still not sure where he's sneaking off to, though. I right? have no idea. <laughs> and that's, I, I mean, no that's idea. alluded to quite nicely in and the film. Fun. But I kind of wonder fun. how long is, how long is it going to take for that penny to drop? It's but nice. Well, you know, it's a throwback to the old, you know, to the the original, you know, the origins of the character. You know, Kent was always there, and Olsen was always there, and you know, Perry were always they were always there, but they and they knew, it, but they, you know, he was right there, but they couldn't see him. You know. Maybe he's just outside having a ciggy or something. Probably. In your, in your imagination. Yeah, yeah. He's by the water cooler. <laughs> yeah, by totally. the water cooler. He's on his computer somewhere, damn it. He's texting someone now, right? It's a long way from all the president's men, right? Yes. In this, in this, <laughs> this new environment. Yeah, yeah. It's changed everything. Um, what, I mean, the, the, the planets bounce back, the daily planets bounce back from a, a devastating attack in the, in, right. the, in the first film here. Right. Um, I mean, do you think that's in the back of the characters' minds as they're going about their, their daily work? You know, um, I think it's kind of at the forefront of the storytelling in terms of the way that they've got Superman, you know, they're trying to hold Superman responsible for all this devastation and all this stuff that has happened. Um, so I think it's nicely placed at the forefront of the story. Um, and it grounds it, you know. It sort of grounds it in a kind of reality that none of the previous films dealing with Superman or Batman does.